The media is getting absolutely tore up for their insane and desperate coverage of the coronavirus because they keep trying to politicize things, speculate and point fingers. Well, the Surgeon General has told them to stop and boy, are they outraged. Why, they say. What if we want to speculate about insane things like Trump canceling the election or accusing him of politicizing it and then celebrating when they when the Democrats politicize it? The fact remains, much of the coverage and the media hype around what's going on with the coronavirus has been complete and utter BS. There's been a lot of good reporting. There's been a lot of people in the media reporting information to the best of their abilities, and things are kind of getting out of control. It's hard to know exactly what's happening, and people are panicking. Don't panic. I don't, I don't really know what to tell you, and I'm not going to pretend like I've been perfect either. What I can tell you is the media trying to inject politics and speculate as to why the orange man is bad this time is nothing short of problematic. Right now, the question should not be, Trump did good or bad, therefore, what should we say or do about Trump? The question should be, what, what, what should we be doing to mitigate this crisis? I think for the most part, while the federal government plays a very important role in what's happening with the shutdowns and the curfews and all the weird stuff happening, it's important to realize that local governments are going to be having the biggest impact on your life. Right now, where I'm at, in a small town, a suburb, they're shutting down schools. New Jersey is contemplating a statewide curfew. That's not from Trump. And I'm not going to pretend like just because Trump does or doesn't do something, he is the issue. As Andrew Yang said before he left the primary race, Democrats need to stop pretending like Donald Trump is the cause of all of their problem. And naturally, many of these people in media might as well just be members of the Democratic Party. I mean, most of them actually are and make donations. Here's the point. What I try to do is focus specifically on here's what's going on with the coronavirus, the pandemic, etc., mostly on my other channel, youtube.com slash Timcast News. On this channel, I do typically talk about politics and the media and things of that nature. So as of now, almost all of the news everywhere is just about the coronavirus. And while I think it is fine for news outlets and commentators to say, you know, what's going to happen next? What should you pay attention to? Here's what I think. I am not OK with the media acting like they're the arbiters of truth who get to smear and play politics on this one. That's not what you should be doing. And now I find me find myself paradoxically doing something similar because I'm going to now be pointing the finger at media over their attempts at politicizing the crisis, which they've been doing. The first story I want to show you, Surgeon General tells media to stop finger pointing at the Trump administration's coronavirus response. Naturally, what do you think the media has responded with? How, how harumph I say, oh, we, we're journalists. You can't tell us what to do. And the Surgeon General is striking back, and so are many other people. So let's, let's check out this story, and I'm going to go through a bunch of what's going on with the media. But I do want to show you some of the more drastic things that are taking place now. And, and you know, I'll be a bit self-critical. There's only so much I or any, anyone else can do. We're trying to actually talk about what's happening with the coronavirus pandemic and what the results will be. So I'm going to show you some serious stuff. I know a lot. Uh, there's a decent amount of people who are upset because they feel like panic is setting in when, when I or anyone else talks about it. I am not, for the most part, critical of that. I can understand there is truth that statement, but I don't know what you want me to do. Here's the news. Here's what's happening. And I'm going to give it to you to the best of my abilities and try and break it down. So we've got some serious stuff going on. Curfews, bars being closed. But first, let's tackle the media trying to smear this on the, the, the president and politics. And, and before I do, let me just say, I have refrained from calling out the, you know, the Democrats or Trump for the most part. I've been a little critical of Trump, but I understand you're trying to prevent a panic. The, there's, there's so many people in the media that can't see anything other than Trump, or perhaps it's because they know that's their path to a click and a quick buck. Let's read the news. Before we get started, head over to timcast.com slash donate if you'd like to support my work. There are several ways you can give, but the best thing you can do, share this video. You look, there's, there's a lot of people in media that are going to rile everyone up. I'm hoping I'm a counter to that, but I'll be honest with you. As much as people like to say that, you know, they think I'm objective or whatever, I honestly don't really see it that way. I think everyone thinks they're the hero of their own story. So yeah, I'm going to call them out. It just so happens that many people agree with me and don't agree with them. I don't know what else to tell you. What I can say is it's Sunday, typically a snow, slow news day as it is. And now there's literally nothing, nothing in the news other than coronavirus, Fox News, CNN, MSNBC. Everything is just about this. But yet somehow, while we are seeing an uptick in cases around the world, 
panic from governments. There are still people in media who find it in their souls, the ability to say it's Trump's fault all day, every day. Now, that being said, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, because YouTube is likely not going to, to tell you unless you do that if you like my videos. Let's read a little bit of this first story, and then I want to show you how the media reacted. And boy, are they not happy. Surgeon General Jerome Adams told White House reporters Saturday that there should be no more criticism or finger pointing at the Trump administration's coronavirus response. We really need you all to lean into and prioritize the health and safety of the American people, Adams said at a briefing with Vice President Pence and other members of the White House Coronavirus Task Force. No more bickering, no more partisanship, no more criticism or finger pointing, he continued. There'll be plenty of time for that. The Trump administration has come under intense scrutiny from members of Congress and the media for its lackluster response to the, chrono- to the coronavirus, which has now infected at least 2,500 people in the U.S. Well, that number, my understanding, is now over 3,000. This article is from the other day. They say other countries experiencing outbreaks, such as South Korea, are running 10,000 tests per day. Because there aren't enough test kits available, doctors and public health officials are limiting, test- limiting testing to people who are seriously ill or are at risk because they're elderly or have underlying health conditions. As a result, it's not clear how many people in the U.S. have the coronavirus, but some experts estimate there are thousands of undetected cases. Over in Ohio, some state health officials said 100,000. Then later came out and said it was a guesstimate. That's not the full number. So I can't tell you exactly what you should or shouldn't do. And I will tell you this. Panic is always a mistake. You need to think rationally. There are a lot of people trying to exploit the system through price gouging and stuff like that. Those people are bad people. Don't panic. Don't overbuy. But think calmly and rationally, and you should have supplies. The CDC has advised this. Limit social distancing. Don't go out. uh, I'm sorry. Limit social contact. Engage in social distancing, right? Well, let's check. let's, Let's get to the media on this one. From the Hill. Media members react to straight talk from Surgeon General. Quite a prescription. See, they're angry. Members of the media ripped Surgeon General Jerome Adams after he reprimanded journalists for their coverage of the White House response to the coronavirus. And of course, it's the usual suspects. The people in media who claim to be rational, sane voices, but can only ever shriek orange man bad over and over and over again. Why, look, it's our good friend Maggie Haberman, who said in response to the Surgeon General, quite a prescription from the Surgeon General. Reporters are reporting after a series of mess ups by the government in their response to the coronavirus. Joy Reid said, um, did the Surgeon General just tell the U.S. to take coronavirus seriously? Has he met his boss? And did he just order Americans not to criticize the president? No. The Surgeon General made a very good point. And you know why I'm calling it a very good point? Not because I'm here to defend him, because I made the exact same point before he did. If you've got a problem with the president's response to the pandemic, which I personally have criticized more than once, the response should not be, Trump did a bad job, therefore, orange man bad, November, Democrats, blah, blah, blah. The, 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 the comment should be, I think Trump did a bad job early on. He's changed course. He's taking action now. Let's talk about it later and do what we can to protect lives and protect our health care system. I am less concerned about politicking. If you have an issue with the president, save it until this is over. And then you can voice that opinion. What we, I mean, look, I'll be honest. You can, you can say whatever you want whenever you want. I think the media should be chilling out on the politicking. I have absolutely refrained from talking about a ton of the stuff the Democrats have done that I think I I would be critical of as well, because I don't want to play that game. And I said as much. If you got an issue with the president, by all means, you're free to express your opinion. But please, following your complaint, the focus should be, here's what we all should do now. If you want to complain about who should be the president, save it for the election cycle. November is not that far away. Here we have Yashir Ali said, someone tell the Surgeon General that it is not his place to talk about bickering or partisanship from the White House podium. His job is to talk about matters of public health. Ridiculous. Yeah, and he did. That's actually what he did when he went up there. And he was right. You, we, we're at a time of crisis right now. Whether it's warranted or not, I know there are some people who disagree. But we are, we are facing a serious concern over whether or not our, our, our health care system can handle this crisis. It may be overhyped. Good. It would be a good thing. Because the worst case scenario, we do nothing. And then afterwards, we regret it. Better safe than sorry. But I got to admit, man, I'm not the person who has all the answers. who can tell you what to do, what we should do. I can just say right now, based on what, everything we've seen from these other countries, it's best to, to be safe than sorry, I suppose. But of course, we have more. Jake Tapper, 
schooled by Surgeon General on White House virus, uh, White House virus response. Many people in the media are, they're Democrats. You know, I've talked about this before. I know it's, it instantly makes it so that people on the left don't want to watch and they accuse me of not being left wing or whatever. When I don't, I don't even really say that, I say I'm like a center left politically, which is a fact, not, not a tribal position or a political party. But when you, when, you, when you see people like Jake Tapper try and smear the president, make him look bad, I have to wonder what his goal is. But let me tell you this more importantly, when Donald Trump made his emergency announcement that travel, he said, we are suspending travel from Europe, you know, for the next 30 days or whatever. Immediately, you had Don Lemon freak out saying, why is he giving us bad information? And why won't he tell us oh, the truth? It is normal for a president to make a statement and for journalists to follow up. They acted like every statement ever given by a president was perfectly clear information that required no follow up. If that were the case, we wouldn't even have a White House press corps asking for clarity. There's a press secretary for this reason. Hey, the president said this thing. OK, and then the journalists are supposed to say, uh, did you mean X, Y and Z? No, I just meant Y and Z. Ah, interesting. I didn't realize. OK, great. But when it's Trump, it's always orange man bad. Now, get this. They say, this is from Newsbusters. Despite multiple attempts by CNN host Jake Tapper to seemingly embarrass the Trump administration with their response to the coronavirus during Sunday's State of the Union, U.S. Surgeon General Jerome Adams schooled him on the facts. Tapper even questioned if President Trump was even listening to the advice of medical professionals, only, be, only to be told uh, the multiple doctors in the room were not being suppressed. At one point, Tapper tried to stoke public fear by suggesting Trump was willing to sacrifice Americans on a cruise ship as so not to increase the number of people infected by COVID-19. Quote, is the president's desire to artificially keep the numbers low by keeping Americans who are off the coast of the United States, is that desire impacting health decisions to help save these Americans who have coronavirus or who could possibly have it, he demanded to know. After pointing out that Taper, Tapper wanted him to make things political, Adams talked about how the safety of the people on board the cruise ships with the virus were a priority. He said, Oh, they have a, a, a bigger quote here. When the president comes in, he makes it clear that he wants the best advice from his health experts. As far as the cruise ships are concerned, our priorities are number one, making sure people who are on those cruise ships and who need medical attention can get it. And we've flown people off the ships. We've flown CDC teams into the ships to help. Number two, we want to get people off the ships as quickly and safely as we can. And number three, we want to protect our communities. And that's a delicate balance that requires the cooperation of many different partners, the Department of Defense, the Coast Guard and others. But again, we want to make sure we're taking care of those people on the ship and in a way that protects them, but also protects communities. Tapper wouldn't let his narrative go, amped up by his claims, by insisting the president was making purely public relations decisions and not medical ones. It is always the assumption that everything Trump is doing is negative. I just don't get it. I really don't. A guy who was a billionaire runs for president. Yeah, I get it. There's status there. There's ego. But why give up a lavish life as a billionaire with your name in gold on buildings around the world to make less money? Well, it's not it's not necessarily about public relations. It's about perhaps the guy thought he could do something good. I think here's my opinion of the president. I think he's an arrogant narcissist, 100 percent. And because of that, he looks at the presidency and says, only I can do it right. And then he goes and it creates a ton of problems for him. But I genuinely think he wants to be president to do things he think will help. He thinks will help. Thus, we ended up with a really great economy for a while up until, you know, the pandemic hit. We took a big hit in the market. Unemployment is still down, but we'll see how things turn out after this. So naturally, a lot of people are upset that this great economy is taking a hit. But I, 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 I really, really do not see Trump as trying to prove to people through PR relations that he's a good president. I think Trump genuinely thinks he's he's better than, than most people and should be president because he'll do it better. And this res resulted in him bypassing, you know, the normal workflow and ignoring advice from others. You can criticize him all day for it. But to make the assumption that he doesn't actually care is insane, because if Trump really does want to win the PR battle, he can't leave this crisis ha having been defeated. He needs to make sure people get better and the stories improve, which is very difficult when the media attacks him all day, every day. When looking at the at the cruise ship, people in media kept saying Trump's trying to keep the numbers in the United States down by leaving these people trapped. Or it could be if you release a bunch of infected people into our country, you will get rampant spread. I don't know why the assumption is always that he's evil. 
It's like, dude, you don't have to like the guy personally, but I don't think he's evil. I think he's wrong. I think he's arrogant. I think he can be stupid, but come on. He's doing what he thinks is right. He's in a difficult position. You don't want to spark a panic and you don't want to ignore the problem. And I think his response initially wasn't good enough. But that's, that's not the point. The point now isn't for me to tell you how to vote or what to do. That's up to you. You decide. The point is now is to stop the politicking and say, while we all recognize or, or many of us recognize we didn't like his initial response, what can we do now to protect those people on that cruise ship? Why couldn't Jake Tepper ask that question? If Trump says it's better to keep them on board, what can we do to protect their health as well as the communities like the Surgeon General said? Let me show you some absolutely fun media. BuzzFeed News reporting. What happens if Trump tries to cancel the election because of the coronavirus? He might well try, even though the answer is no, he cannot. OK, you know what, man? Yeah, maybe we've seen the Democratic primaries delayed. But what is this? What does this have to do with anything? This is what they're doing. OK, there have been people who have been criticizing me, saying I'm stoking panic or whatever by even talking about it because I'm showing stories where they say like curfew in effect. And I'm saying, hey, I'm taking it seriously. Fine. You can be mad at me. It's OK. I can take criticism. I always try to do better. This is a whole new level of crazy. First of all, we are nowhere near this conversation. OK, they are postponing primary elections. They're not talking about even canceling elections. And what's the what's what is this? They've been saying this all the time. Trump's going to try and stay in power after November. Oh, come on, man. There is nothing to indicate that's the, that's that's true. Why BuzzFeed? What are you doing? There have been a bunch of stories that are that are a bit more fair. Like the New York Times asked, could Donald Trump postpone the election? No, I think that's a good question. I'm not a big fan of bringing up this politi polit uh, politicizing of the crisis, but we have seen the Democratic primaries, a couple of them now postponed. I think I think so far, too. And if that's the case, I think it's a reasonable question to say if this extends into November, will we have to move the election back? It's a scary thought. But to say that Trump wants to outright cancel it. Nope. Trump just walks up and says, by the way, because of the infection, we're all going to be, you know, uh, we're, we're going to be just canceling the election and I'm going to be president. Oh, come on, dude. You think Trump would walk out and just be like, no elections. And people would be like, OK, it's never going to happen. That's insane. Now, look, there, there are things I couldn't predict. I talked for forever about how I thought Trump was going to landslide. I still think that for the most part, that's the case. But I got to admit, I never saw coronavirus coming. I never saw this pandemic coming. So I, I do what I, what I can when, with the information I have. But there are so many variables. Let me show you. Just you look, there's, there's so much media that's just, here's Slate. Trump can't cancel the election, but states could do it for him. Oh, we've gone beyond, no, Trump can't do it, to now literally a story. Well, Trump can't, but the states would do it. Yes, because the states are all going to collude to make Trump the emperor of the United States. I don't see it. Y'all need to calm down. In the event that we actually needed to cancel an election, I don't think you'll, you'll even care all that much because that's got to be a serious, serious crisis. But canceling the election? What does that mean? That Trump's president forever? No, come on. Postponing it or even emergency procedures to, 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 to change the government or do something would require extremely drastic circumstances. I just do not see it happening. Now, there could be complaints that because the, ele the election isn't postponed, voter turnout is affected and people cry foul. So this should be something we take seriously. But they're trying to act like, you know, since Trump got elected, it's all it's all, it's always been about whether or not Trump is ever going to give up the reins. And they were they were, you know, Bill Maher has said it, that Trump is you think this guy's going to leave office. He'll never do it. Oh, come on, man. He's making this stuff up. Now, let me show you my absolute favorite bit. Check this out. The Washington Post. Trump's critics aren't politicizing the coronavirus. Trump is. Protecting Americans is his job. Politicizing is prioritizing his public image over public health. From March 10th, 2020, the Washington Post says it's Donald Trump who's doing this and he's supposed to be protecting America. That's right. And then how about this Washington Post piece? Let's politicize the coronavirus crisis. Are you kidding me? Washington Post, get some editorial guidelines. What's your what's your what's your mission here? To post contradictory articles so we don't understand what your opinion is? I understand they're written by different people. The issue is there is an editorial direction that that would would be well served to be consistent. You can't get mad at Donald Trump because you're accusing him of politicizing this. Meanwhile, people are claiming that Trump is going to be God, you know, God emperor and take over the country. Calm down, everybody. You're making that up. But then they go ahead and publish this piece saying, you know what? 
Let's do it. This time they post a picture of a, you know, a serious looking Nancy Pelosi. And this was published on March 14th. This is the problem I see with the media. They, they, they go after the president. This is their opportunity instead of focusing on what we can do to keep people safe. There's a bunch of crazy stuff happening right now, and it's got me a little bit worried. I didn't initially take this thing as seriously as some people, but I did take it a bit more seriously than most. A lot of people got mad at me saying, calm down, you're overhyping this. There was, a, there was this belief that the media was just dramatically overhyping everything. Guess what? That's half true. What we're seeing here with like politicizing this, CNN, they absolutely are willing to take advantage of the, of the crisis. But it is also a fact that governments around the world have been locking down and that this is a, it's a, it's a serious issue. It's a global pandemic. There's a lot I don't understand and you don't understand. We're not experts. So we can only defer to the experts and say, let's do our best. But of course, CNN blasted for now declaring Wuhan virus as racist after weeks of networks Chinese, China's coronavirus coverage. This is what I want to drive home to you. The media, for the most part, their goal is clicks. They will make up what they need to make up. They will accuse Trump because it gets clicks, not because it's real. I'm trying to avoid doing that. I'm not perfect. I did, I did a story recently about Rashida Tlaib, someone who I've been, I've been critical of. And she was asking about the potential numbers of infected here in the United States, what we could see from a health expert. I'm not gonna, go, going to go after her or Pelosi or anybody if we are all doing our best to try and solve this problem. And there have been a bunch of things I could criticize them for, for sure. I don't want to play that game. I want to make sure that the people who are at home, who are hungry or who have elderly family, know what they can expect. So I want to talk about the more serious things that are affecting everybody, not whether or not the orange man is bad or conservatives are racist. I've, cri I've criticized the media for this already. But check this out. Comedian Samantha B calls Fox News coronavirus coverage a racist orchestra. I did a segment on this. It's pathetic. These people, uh, Samantha B is not a journalist. I get it. But you see how the media is trying to play this narrative of, of, of no matter what happens, Trump is bad. And it's actually, it's sad. It is. Let me show you something. They have a tweet in this from Jim Acosta, who called it the Wuhan coronavirus in January. No, it's not racist to tie the virus, which, which first emerged in Wuhan, in China, to China. That's literally what happened. But they single out Trump and they single out Fox News for this because they're more interested in playing politics. Now, of course, there are people on Fox News who I can criticize as well. One woman downplayed it. She actually got suspended from her show. I don't know what's going on with that for, uh, right now. But listen, the last thing that we really need is in the midst of a crisis to weaponize it for partisan points. I was watching the news earlier and I thought it was interesting that we're kind of shifting away from a lot of the culture war stories, not entirely, as I've pointed out, but people are more concerned with health and safety than they are with what's going on between the Republicans and the Democrats or something. I thought it was a good thing. I was like, maybe I was wrong about, you know, the coming conflict and the likelihood for a second civil war two or whatever. I mean, we'll see what happens because Trump's on part of win re-election and the Bernie Sanders people are freaking out. But of course, I'm wrong a lot about a lot of things. I base my opinions off of the information I have at the time. And I'm not a psychic. Nobody is. Sometimes I'm right. Sometimes I'm wrong. I don't think I'm any better than, you know, the average person for the most part. Maybe I'm maybe I'm a little bit better, you know, more likely to predict something. I have no idea. But what I'm what, what I'm what I was hoping for is that maybe what really brings us together is a shared, you know, enemy, the coronavirus. Maybe because of this, we'll stop focusing on what's different and focusing on what, we, what what's the same and what we need to do to protect each other. But a little bit a little bit of that hope was dashed because the media has consistently tried to make this about Trump. They've consistently tried to make it about orange man bad instead of about the victims, those getting sick and whether or not we are doing the right things to solve the problem. Criticize the president, please. I got no problem with that. But your criticism should be followed up with constructive comments on how we do better, not how you think Trump needs to be removed from office and how he's trying to steal the election to cancel it. You can criticize the guy and then say, I think his initial reaction was not that good. Here's what we should do. OK, I'm listening. But if you're going to come up to me and you're going to start saying his reaction was bad, he's an awful person, we got to get rid of him. I'm going to say, you lost me. Save the argument for when we're not in a crisis and I'm not, you know, stuck without toilet paper in my house. Figuratively, obviously, there's a lot of people buying up toilet paper for whatever reason. But you, you get it, man. I'm not surprised that we're seeing all of this media finger pointing. People have accused me 
of, you know, trying to get clicks off this. Let me tell you something. The videos that I've done on, on the coronavirus have almost all, entirely been demonetized up until like today. And still 90% of them are demonetized and viewership is down. I'm not talking about this because I want to. I'm talking about it because it's the news. It's what's happening. But these people who are trying to shock you into thinking that Donald Trump is going to try to cancel the election. Oh, no. What do we do? Yeah, they're full of it. I I, I see no reason to even bring this up, but they want to shock you. Give me that click. They will exploit this crisis to make you scared of the president at a time when we need to be focusing on what the president is talking about so that we can do better, so that we can actually protect each other. I'll leave it there. Stick around. Next segment's coming up at 6 p.m. at youtube.com slash Timcast, Timcast News. And uh, I'll see you in the next segment.